Okay. And and what I'm going to be sharing is something we're just experimenting with. So it's um, it's still developing, and maybe you all have some add or take away from it as well. But um, I've been reading. Um, my first exposure was uh, Contagious Disciple Making about a uh, year and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer, and just started practicing myself. And then last uh, year I got in touch, or I, I met Hermie, and he started coaching me. And uh, I can really say um, we've really tried, you know, to uh, get discovery groups going. I, you know, I, I'm full-time. We're here in Spain, and... Um, and it's just, I felt like I'm, it's been difficult, like trying to get movement going. You know, you read the stories and you're praying and you're prayer walking and you're, you're doing, you're trying to do, you can always do more, right? But uh, you're doing what you, pretty much the best you can. But um, it just seemed like we weren't getting that traction and, and that, uh, and I kept in mind where well, you've got to go slow to go fast. And I believe those things. And I still believe in discovery groups 100%. But um, sometimes I'd listen to other calls. I, would, uh, I was in on some of Roy Moran's calls or listen to one of the tapes of his calls. And uh, it just seemed like in general everybody was, I, won't, I don't want to say struggling, but just kind of like a, and he described it in the last one. He said, like, like he's like pushing something uphill. He's he, it's like he's having to push this, and they're still crawling, and um, so you know I I'm getting older. My time's running out. I don't have a lot of time to. <laughs> I've got to keep pray you know praying and asking God for for wisdom and keep reading. Totally convinced of DMM principles. Totally. I'm very. Uh, but I, how many of you have read Neil Cole stuff like uh, Church 3.0? Have any of you read that? Okay. Are you familiar with Neil Cole? You know, I, I, I wasn't, right? I wasn't familiar with him. Um, Steve Addison. Are you familiar with Steve Addison? Okay. So you guys, so, you know, you kind of look around the internet and you try to find these different things, but I, <clears throat> Neil Cole has a book called uh, Church 3.0, <clears throat> and he's, he makes a really good argument about if we want to see disciples make disciples, um, we have to start at, a, at the cellular level. And he's not talking about cell groups, but reducing the number down to a minimum of like two or three. So, you know, and if I'm saying stuff you all have heard, I apologize, but this was all like, hmm, interesting stuff. He, 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 um, and he says he's been doing it for years, and they've seen a lot of multiplication. Um, one of Roy Moran's last words on the last video I saw that you, you all sent, he said that we don't do anything unless it, um, it reproduces disciples making disciples. Basically, everything they do has to be disciples making disciples. So putting all those little pieces together, uh, I, I saw that uh, um, Neil Cole talked about life transformation groups. So I looked at it. I really didn't like the questions at all. I, I thought his questions seemed very... Um, and that's just my own personal life. They just seem very, I don't know. I don't know if the word is legalistic, but just, you know, how many bad thoughts have you had this week? Or have you dealt honestly in all your financial affairs this week? I mean, they're good questions. That's okay. But they weren't convincing. But the idea of dividing up, a, he made a real good argument. And I think we're all in agreement that we need to make things as simple as possible so that they can replicate and they can reproduce. And that's something David Watson talks about. So he talks about this life transformation group um, having three parts, reading the scriptures, then 
life on life, meeting together and asking, having some time together, asking some questions, accountability questions, and then praying for each one. You'd only do groups of twos or three, and each one would uh, give uh, uh, two people they would want to be prayed for their salvation. And then there's a list of verses that go along with it. I think I sent most of you that. But so just got, you come up with names and then a list of verses, and you teach the believers, and this is for believers, to pray through those scriptures one person a day. Um, so it kind of got my attention. I thought, well, let me try this. I'm going to try this. And I came up with my own questions built around the, the three commandments, kind of on City Team's um, logo, love God, love others, and then the Great Commission. So I went back to those three foundational commandments, and I just came up with basically six questions, um, two for each of those commandments. I thought, wow, if I can, if I can focus our attention on those, make them obedience-based, um, can't get too, you can't be too far off uh, if, you're, if you're sticking close to those commands. So, um, so I started a, a group or two, and uh, one of the things they say is read, you want to read about 20 to 30 chapters a week. That's a lot. But Neil Cole says, we don't want them to finish. The, th the idea is that, um, that if you're meeting two or three people, um, if one of the group doesn't finish, then they read that book again. And, and he intentionally makes it a lot. And then, um, so it takes two to three, up to four weeks to finish a book. Brent, can I just uh, say something real quick? So I started that. Now, one of the reasons I, I thought this was a good idea was it seemed like every time I was encouraging people and training people in discovery groups, they just didn't seem to be that, I mean, these are, these are normal Christians. These aren't carnal Christians I'm working with, but it just seemed like no one could get going. No, it was always Candy or myself starting groups. And uh, I think we got up to uh, six or seven groups. I think right now we have six discovery groups going. Um, yeah, six groups going. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to start trying to make disciples first. I'm going to back up and I'm going to see if I can strengthen these believers and get them in the word. And I'm going to ask them some questions that um, get them focused out as well. Like how can you uh, um, how can you obey the Great Commission to make disciples this week? And I started with a couple of guys, and I was amazed right away. They started naming specific individuals that they would try to reach out to. They almost read all the chapters. After three weeks, they said, "You know what? I've read more of the Bible in three weeks than I have in the last year and a half." That was sad. But I think a lot of believers are in that same camp. And so the believers are weak. And I thought of that verse in Isaiah 37, 30, and 31. That, um, it says that, uh, and it says that uh, once more a remnant will take root downward and will bear fruit upward. And the idea of trying to, you know, getting people back down into the word and their relationship with God before they can bear fruit upward. So I started doing that, and all of a sudden, we were, for the first time, we were getting some traction. So that's been about, uh, um, Hermie, how long has that been? About four weeks ago we started doing this? I talked to Hermie about this first. I said, before I go into this direction, I just want to bounce, bounce it off you, and he gave me a green light to uh, experiment. And I think we have, well, let's see how many groups. We have uh, seven uh, transformation groups going now. Really a lot of health. I'm just sensing health and they're out of those seven already. There's two second generation groups have started. Um, one's been a discovery group and one has been another transformation group. Um, and it's not candy or I, uh, the, um, transformation group was done by one of the, the ladies. So, um, at least I feel like, and I, and I was talking to Hermie about this last week, I feel like, well, it, it's kind of like we're in first gear at least. <laughs> like I was, before I was like I was in neutral revving the engine. 
and trying to go somewhere and, and, and believing in it, trying to get everybody to go, and no one was going anywhere. Very few, very few. But now we're off to uh, – so we went from six discovery groups, and now four weeks later we're uh, 14 groups altogether. Um, seven uh, – in Spanish, Elmer, they call it, we call them grupos de transformación, GT groups. Sounds kind of cool, you know. Nice. But I didn't want to call them LTG groups because it sounds like lesbian, transvestites, and gays, you know. So I didn't want to go that way. I, thought, <laughs> I, I saw that. And, I saw that. And I didn't want to go GT. And then the other one that uh, Neil Cole suggests, and we, we're just getting going, but we're already seeing the believers saying, hey, I want to start one of these. And we call them um, the seven signs of Jesus out of John. So you just take the seven passages of the miracle passages. And Neil Coles said he's, do, he's been doing that for years, and he started many churches using that. So the idea is in John 20, 30, 31, he says that these signs have been given in order that you might know that Christ is the Son of God and that by believing you might have life in his name. So he says that God has given us these signs to lead people to believe in Christ. So we're going to do discovery groups. Rather than starting back in Genesis, we're going to do a, a shorter discovery group uh, using those passages. And when they finish those, we'll say, hey, now would you like to go back to Genesis? So, it, you know, it's kind of like before we were only offering hamburgers and now we're offering pizza and, and hot dogs, you know, or something like that. You know, it's like, so that's basically it. That's kind of what got us here. And I, I can only say is, hey, we're just starting. I'm a little bit concerned that we don't get bogged down in um, just Christians working with Christians. Mm -hmm. But what we do want to do is we're going to take these discovery groups or these transformation groups. They really, you can start grouping them together. In fact, um, a number of these groups, we're probably going to start our first little church here as a result of these groups. And so now we're making disciples, we're making churches out of disciples. The base of the group is disciples. That's cool. You have healthy disciples rather than a bunch of, you know. So the other thing that's amazed me is that they're reading the passages. And when we get together, see each other, everybody say, where are you reading? What, how did you do? And, and what, you know, and how far did you get? Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. You know, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. But they're doing it. So that's kind of it. Um, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four. We have four second generation discovery groups. And then my, one of the groups is now in the hands totally of a Peruvian family. And then Ken and I are in the same group in our home. So Ken and I are only in one discovery group. Um, so I think what we'll, we're going to we're looking for a date in November to take all these transformation groups these and meet with them on a Saturday or su probably a Sunday afternoon and start teaching them how to give out spiritual snacks, how to um, the the person of peace idea, um, prayer walking, uh, you know the DMM principle. Start training them maybe once a month, but now we have a solid team of people who are more healthy, and they already are starting to look out. Um, so that's kind of what yeah. where we're at. So Grant, if I can just I summarize. Hear, do I have you turned off? Am I, can you hear me no, now? Uh, is your, check your, unmuted. You all hear, we can, we, we can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Hermie. Okay. Here's the, so your, your speakers. For some reason, I'm not hearing. Uh, Grant, your speakers. Let me type you a message. Real quick. Can you hear me now, Grant? Grant, can you hear me? Grant, can you hear me? 
<laughs> That's a bummer. Okay. One, two. So just to summarize, so you've been mobilizing some uh, existing Christians from traditional churches, found out that they are really having a hard time starting groups, even you know, connecting with, with non-Christians. And as you know, we started talking about that, and I was like, okay, what's the barriers? What's the barriers? Is it the process? And you just found out that, that you know, it's hard to give out something that they don't have. And they, need to get them, they almost need something to get them to a DMM starting line. Uh, so looking at, at, at these life transformation groups, and we talked about some of these people have never been discipled, and now we ask them to go and disciple others. So this is a really simple way how you can start to disciple Christians in the stripped-down version, get them to flex and, and develop some of those disciple-making muscles, and uh, but in a way that then can lead to to them starting discovery groups with uh, with non-Christians. Uh, multiply with among believers. They start these transformation groups, these GT groups, but when they find persons of peace, you start discovery groups. So um, uh, if any of you have other, have any questions so far, you just got to unmute. It, uh, I don't have a question, but I just see the, uh, the opportunity here in uh, doing something that, as Grant was saying, at the very simplest level, and then teaching them how to multiply this. And so at some point, you tell them, okay, now have you, the person who started the group, help the people that are in your group to start this with somebody else. And what you might also do is do this for a while, and then um, move into uh, showing them how to do a DBS with non-believers. Mm. And then you have them start a, um, a LT. Uh, a TG group, a transformation group uh, with some other believers and then show them and then have them uh, show the next group how to do discovery group with non-believers as they're praying and working towards that. And so you have it kind of a closed end of the group that doesn't just keep on going, but it's uh, kind of a forced to multiply. Mm -hmm. I love your questions, Grant. You like those? <laughs> well, yeah, those are great. I like the way you worded them. Okay. Real simple. Grant, can, Grant, can you talk a little bit some of the responses that I was just so encouraged when you shared, you know, um, how they really started sharing, they started serving, meeting needs and things like that. Can you get some, uh, can you just share some of those stories? Yeah. Um, I, I was just, uh, I guess I'm used to being in groups with, um, with with unbelievers in the discovery group. So when you ask the question, how can you obey this and all that, it's pretty slow, you know, it's pretty. Um, but when, with these groups, when I asked them, um, we started asking each other, it, there's something really cool about just being two or three. Uh, when I asked them like, uh, how can you practically love your neighbor this week? Oh no, for instance, I said, um, what has God been speaking to you about? And so we went around and I said, well, I see that when, when the disciples couldn't cast out a demon, he said, hey, um, this kind of demon only comes out by prayer and fasting. So I, the next question was, you know, well, what are you gonna, going to obey this week? And so I just said, um, I'm going to pray and fast on Monday for um, one of the ladies in our group because I know she has some uh, demonic activity going on there she's going to like uh you know different ladies who lay their hands on her and stuff so the other guy said well i'm going to do that too i've never prayed and fasted for a person before and then the other guy said i'm going to do it too so we all joined together and they prayed and fast on uh, on a monday and then and and that we're seeing some different uh, we're seeing some results in that i mean we got to keep praying uh how can you practically love your neighbor this week and we mentioned a person that has a problem uh, she's almost blind, and uh, they they got together and they bought a um a, a, a little tablet for her, a cheap like uh, Android tablet, so she could read the Bible in big letters. So 
uh, people are are doing stuff. I mean, and they're they're uh, one of the ladies in uh, Candy's group said, "Well, I'm going to start a seven uh, a, a seven signs of Jesus study." We're like, "What?" When we asked, you know, what what are you going to do this week to fulfill the Great Commission? Well, I'm going to ask Gladys to start a, a seven signs of G, of Jesus. I'm like, "Wow, <laughs> that is cool." <laughs> and so um, she she started. She did it. She did it. She got two ladies, and they start this Friday night. I'm like, whoa, this is, we're getting traction for the first time. Um, it is believers, but it's that idea. I think if, if they experience multiplication, like what Tom was just saying, we can get them to experience the basic, what's, what's it like to multiply and um, on a smaller level, then when we introduce the vision, it, it won't seem strange at all to them. They'll, they'll understand it. And they're building it right in from the beginning. Like, what are you going to obey? Um, I have, I'm, I'm working with this guy. He's 23 years old. He's a Romanian. He uh, He's a barber. He's just coming out of a drug background. He's 23. And one of the questions is, do you have a relationship with someone that needs to improve? He said, yeah, my mom. So what are you going to do about it? He said, um, I'm going to spend time with her this week. So the next week we got together. How did it go? I spent time with her and she, she was laughing. Um, we were talking, we were eating together. We haven't done that. I can not remember, you know, so people are doing it. People are taking these things uh, seriously. We don't make them real heavy, um, but we are, uh, we are seeing. So we're, we're seeing the first two questions are about how to love God by obeying his word. The next two questions are your, are the second great commandment. And then the third one is, how can you obey the Great Commission? That's the Great Commission. And then do you have a, do you have the need to confess a sin? We just threw that in there because Neil Cole has it on his list. And we don't say you have to confess a sin, but it's been interesting how the confession, one, this one man said, uh, confess some marital issues. I wouldn't have known, but we kept it. We're going to pray about it, and we're keeping it in there. Um so we're, one thing that we're trying to avoid is that these become too tight of groups that don't multiply, where the people are sharing all this stuff, and then they don't want to multiply. So I don't want to have to share all this stuff again. So we're kind of keeping that light, right? We're not trying to get these to become these deep, ingrown groups. We want them to be multiplying and focusing out. Yeah, that was one of the things that, you know, uh, when we got started on this demon journey, we, we used Neil Cole's uh, life transformation groups. And I was probably in a life transformation group uh, for about three, three and a half years. And it really helped, you know, with, with the spiritual formation. And, and there was a lot of really good benefits coming out of it. But the thing is, we went so deep. We confessed, like, after a while, once there's trust, you know, um, we we really went deep and then every time you know you add someone new into that group it just really breaks down some of that uh that intimacy and almost the group then didn't want to multiply we didn't want to add and then also you don't want to break up because the 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 the, um, the process of multiplication is you start with two or three you grow to four and then you split up into two and then that's how it multiplies but we, we were about three people and we just uh, really loved meeting together that we didn't want to split and we didn't want to add anybody. We had a few people come visiting and it just really lowers the intimacy level. So, so yeah, it, 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 it didn't multiply uh, a whole lot. And I think um, Grant Wisely is kind of keeping it a little bit light um, and, and not necessarily always you have to split into two. But when you find someone that's really interested, you can just start at uh, LTG or, or teach that person to start uh, if, if, if you want to stay with this group. So kind of like a more of a discovery group form of multiplication. I think okay. also then, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Hermie. Um, I was just curious, you know, when you start these groups, is there, do oftentimes they evolve into missional teams? Um, you know, a lot of times I think one of the struggles with um, 
starting discovery Bible studies or really engaging a particular community as people begin to do it on their own. And it's just really tough. It's so much easier if you're doing it with a, a team reaching the same weight class. So I was just curious how many of them really go from there to working as a team. We're just getting started, David. Um, we, we've just been doing this since January, um, since we got back in Spain. So we're developing the team, but my wife and I are the common denominator. But what we're seeing is going to be so natural to bring these little groups together. I kind of envision them fitting together like honeycomb, you know, they're just, they're just going to couple together very easily and meet. Um, one of our, our WIG measures for this year is to at least have a team of 20, uh, excuse me, of 10 uh, co-workers. Um, so that is the goal. Have you seen those 12 lessons, David? Um, David Hinman, have you seen those 12 lessons that, uh, yeah, I think you were on the video, right? When uh, uh, Dan Spark or, or Dan, Stan Parks was. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting. And I actually went through all that um, about three years ago with Frontiers. Somehow yes. They had the same material. Um, they must have ripped uh, Stan Parks off. So, um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to going through that again with a cohort. I'm thinking about using that material with this team that we're raising up. That's good. Yeah, I think that would be very helpful. Um, and I think adding on those components of, you know, how are you going to fulfill the, you know, the, the Great Commission? How are you going to fulfill the um, – just loving your neighbor. I think those are needed components within it. Yeah. So Grant, the idea is now, you know, I know you've been talking with uh, some of these, these uh, transformation groups and that Sunday afternoon gathering, is that once a month? We haven't started yet. Okay. But yeah, I know we, the plan we just started, we just started four weeks ago with these groups. Yes. Yeah. So, we're so but I'm already, I'm already giving them, starting to give them that cast vision. Hey, um, a Sunday afternoon, everybody, all of us are free. Mm. Why don't we come together? Um, I was thinking of it being the first step towards maybe a, a, a new church, but now I'm backing up and thinking, why don't I use it more for training? Mm. You guys have any ideas rather than so, jump to Paul so that, with you for a while. So that's kind of like launching that team you're talking about, David. And uh, Ricardo and Elmer, you guys use uh, launching a base, a DMM base. So, so it, it will start taking the form of that where, yes, some ongoing training will take place. There's some uh, peer learning. There's some encouraging one another. Uh, and I, I remember the last time we talked, you specifically didn't necessarily want to extract them out of their church, their, their existing congregation. So right. meeting, meeting at a different time and, you know, at some point, maybe if they, they, they do want to see that, man, this feels more like, like church and we wonder this, then maybe it merge into that. But um, you don't necessarily want to pull them out of the communications. They're really powerful. No, no. We, we all live, most of these people we're working with um, live about a 30-minute drive from the closest church. And most of us go to that church on Sundays. Um, and so uh, they're already kind of getting itchy feet about starting something new. So it's, we're just kind of waiting now for, you know, the birth to come. So it seems like it's already coming down. You know, it's already – and there's some good guys in this group. There's some Spaniards that are good. So they would probably be the leadership of that. Yeah. And there's some groups starting in um, – we really haven't gone very um, – I haven't approached – we've been working on the fringes, kind of like what Roy Moran says in his book that matches. But I'm seeing um, – I don't know what your all's experience is. I like, I like to ask all of you guys. Um, something you've been telling me lately, Hermie, is that you have to have a prayer movement, but we also should have a training movement. Is that what you, didn't you say that recently? You've been talking about that? Yeah, that's one of Stan's uh, um, sayings also. Before you see a disciple-making movement, you need to see a prayer movement and a, and a training movement. 
Um, I think training in context of of follow up and you know being able to get to a place where you can kind of launch teams for some ongoing coaching and training. It's not just going and doing random training, but um, Dave Hunt trained uh, or cast vision and, and did some initial forms of training with about 1,500 plus people in Ethiopia uh, to, um, to really, out of that, he had about five to six guys, Ethiopians, um, that really were the analytic leaders that launched that movement. But, uh, he just had to go and, and, and cast a wide, a wide net to find the right kind of people to really start to pour into. Have any of you done, um, like, there's a church in Madrid that the elders would give me um, a green light to train the whole church if I wanted to, like on a Saturday. But I've resisted that going so wide because it seems like you're just kind of um, – you know, how, do you guys have any suggestions on, like David, you're a, you're a pastor, right, David Hinman? Like, any suggestions on how to approach that? How how I could approach those? And I have a good relationship with these leaders. So, um, what do you? Any suggestion? Um, well, I'm actually doing it, you know, at my own church, but also within the Vineyard Movement. Um, I'm commissioned, I guess, as the the main catalyst to bring this to the whole Vineyard. Um, but one of the things that we've been talking about with Caleb and um, Hermie's been a part of that too, is just that at different people are at different levels um, and you have to use a different approach for each level. So in order to, to cast the net really wide, you know, those are the type of people I'm saying, Hey, you know, if you're interested read this book or I have, I have blog posts, um, I just send them little tidbits to see if they bite onto it. And then if they do, then they're, they're, they progress down to another group, which may be um, life transformation groups. And, you know, all the way down to a catalyst, but we're using a different approach at people on each level. And maybe, you know, even the, you know, the life transformation groups eventually, you'll say, okay, this person's ready for the next level. And then you begin to work with them in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I, I think a different approach for different, different levels of engagement. I think the approach that you took, David, is really more training the, the leadership and raising them up as trainers and coaches yeah. and let, let them select the people and let them train uh, the people in the congregation versus, because then you already have the coaching structure in place mm -hmm. um, versus if, if, if you're going to start that initial training and follow-up falls on you and you know, questions and, and all of that. So you almost need to build that infrastructure prior to really exposing, uh, you know, the body to, to, the, to the training. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I mean, at my church, I'm kind of the point person. And so, mm. yeah, I am directly following up with those people. But these other churches, I'm training up the pastors and then allowing them to um, contextualize it and begin to coach their own people. Um, yeah, that's an important part of it, I think. Um, yeah, I, don't, I think, you know, let them, you know, if we go wide, we're going to go crazy. <laughs> so if we're doing it ourselves, but by commissioning other people to take um, that role and then focusing more on the leaders. Do you, what happens if the, the leaders of the church um, find themselves too busy? And they can't, they don't want to take on that role. They might give you, they might say, yeah, we're for this, but um, just maybe they could give us, delegate some, the next echelon down below them, some of the key people that they trust. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like you guys. I mean, I, I, we have people like that, like Hermie, that, you know, Pantano Church in Tucson, where it's other staff members that are interested. And I don't know how it's going to work. I mean, I, I, I think probably the whole church is not going to adopt it, but it will become a, a parallel track that begins to have a movement outside of the, the church. And that's what I'm finding in my church too. I mean, not, uh, not everybody has adopted it, not even all the pastors, but I've got movements that are running parallel. Um, and I, I just have kind of accepted that. I, I, I just am looking for the people that are ready to do it. 
-hmm. but, but continuing to plant seeds in the others that are not. Um, you know, like I did a Sunday morning message where I actually talked about Matthew 28, but we went through a discovery Bible study and we, we actually modeled it up front in front of everybody. And I had the whole congregation in, in, you know, round tables. And so they did a few of the, the questions within their table. Too. Um, and so that was interesting too, just to, to kind of throw out little seeds. Um, it's a huge paradigm shift. Though. So I think what you're doing, there's something to that. There, there's something that, that helps bring people along versus just writing them off. Yeah. And you're getting them looking outward too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that what will it take question, like to reach all these people out there. Um, that seems to help, but we're still working on that there. Uh, you know, probably like you all, I've done, a lot of reading. I've been getting used to hearing, talking this new language, and I forget sometimes um, that they just don't have all that background. They just it's, it takes a little while to understand it, to catch it. So they have to be kind of patient. <laughs> yeah, I just find that you know the biggest challenge is uh, so few people. Um, they've been Christian for a long time, but they have not been really disciple. At least how we see Jesus disciple his, his people. It's obedient base. It's, uh, it's really in context of loving one another, loving certain tangible needs, spending time with one another, it's giving the word, praying, and then also uh, sharing that outside. So um, it's, it's difficult for them to kind of like really have that kingdom mindset to really start to create some of the, the space needed, the time needed to actually start doing this themselves. So uh, there's almost a need for how do we disciple our folks? And first, uh, and then at the same time, out of that, then they can, um, they can start to disciple others. And sometimes, you know, just the, the, I don't know, Tom, you've done, also discovery groups now with in, 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 in the context of uh, the Christian church at the river. Um, you know, can you share a little bit some of the, the challenges doing it with that group and format as prescribed? Well, the challenge that I found in um, teaching discovery groups to large numbers of believers, we, we uh, the, the whole church was interested in uh, learning how to do discovery groups. And uh, one of the uh, pastors decided that they were going to start doing discovery groups. And he did the initial training, but he'd never done a DBS group. Uh, and as I, as I started moving forward, I realized that there wasn't an adequate foundation. And, and the problem is that um, it's so simple and it's deceptive that people say, oh, this is simple. I can do this. And, uh, and, and, and my initial message to believers has always been you can do this this is really easy you can do this and now i'm kind of backing off and saying you know this is deceptively simple it's harder than it looks to do it right mm -hmm. and and so i'm really encouraging them what i learned from this is you really have to try to convince people if they need ongoing training to do something that's this simple because they will take and mold it into um, a traditional bible study and, and uh, a few of the groups had me come and show the group how to do it. And, um, and those are the groups when, I, when the um, pastors put the survey, how do you like discovery groups? Those are the ones that had the highest markings after months. Because I think they really have to be shown how to do it uh, more on an individual basis. They were shown as a whole group, kind of what we did, David, up in the front. But also you need, to, uh, you need to take it to the next step and show them how to do this to the whole group. What is the philosophy uh, of doing this? And I, as I did this, I had them actually do it, but I, I coached them through um, doing a discovery Bible study in their, uh, in their small groups. And so I guess the, the headline message is um, you really have to convince people that ongoing training is a value and you're casting a vision. That is, as you said, um, Grant, is really different from what is the standard way of thinking of the uh, traditional church. Yeah, it seems like <clears throat> now that I'm, I've been talking to some of the leaders in the church, 
uh, the Spanish church we're going to. And I'm saying, yeah, we're, we're experimenting with uh, transformation groups where we read the word and then we ask some accountability questions and we pray for six people using biblical passages. And they go, oh, wow, okay, now that sounds good. Because before I'd say, yeah, we start, we have unbelievers leading groups. Go, what? You know, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? So uh, <laughs> um, it just, it, it kind of gets them like, them also engaged and, it, and starting to, oh, wow, okay, this sounds good. And then they start seeing, like, I remember we were at a men's breakfast and one of the leaders said, so who's, who are doing these groups? And I looked up, and about 80% of the men seated at the table were in a different, one of the groups. <laughs> well, he's in it, he's one, he's in one, he's one. You know, like a, <laughs> when did this happen? <laughs> so uh, that was kind of cool, you know, that was, and, and he's seeing there, this new excitement that uh, the belief, the, at least in the men's group, they're saying, we're reading the Bible more now than we have in the last year and a half. Mm. And yeah, that's, that's sad, but that's the truth. So. Yeah, it's, it's, what is it? First Peter uh, 5, 4, it talks about, you know, just first, you know, that, that, that reverence for Christ as Lord. And then, you know, it's out of that, that really people start asking and be ready to, to share when asked the hope you have in Christ but do this with respect and gentleness. So um, it's out of that, they, they're, they're, they're really connecting with God at meaningful levels and also in context of community. So, you know, uh, that's going to lead to others asking and then giving permission to, to share. But if, if, if our disciple makers run, run pretty dry, um, and, and like you were saying, you know, they're, they're spiritually pretty weak, uh, uh, they're, they're not going to be effective. You know, um, people are not going to ask uh, those questions. I also, um, I think I might have left this out, but for the first time, I didn't feel like I was pushing. It was just starting to happen. So that was very, very important for me. All of a sudden, oh, wow, I don't have to be a salesman here. Mm. I'm always trying to convince and push and encourage people to get going, you know, and I'm praying for you, and I really am, you know. But all of a sudden, it got so simple that it was doable, and it just all of a sudden, like um, this uh, Sunday, um, I no Saturday we had baptized, baptized our first person of peace on Saturday, came with their family and eleven unbelievers there, um, and, and that person of peace is already we've already seen. Uh, the this, this sister of that lady and her husband make a profession through the discovery group. It took a year, but they just like uh, a month ago, they both professed Christ, put it on our Facebook. We're accepting Jesus now, and, and they're showing great fruit. And he's just reading the Bible. But uh, on Saturday, I invited this man named Santi over. I said, hey, Santi, can you explain to David and to, to Victor, what we do in our discovery group, I mean, in our transformation group. It was so good to see how um, they take ownership of it so quickly. He just started sharing all, how he was all excited about it. And so he did the convincing just by his testimony. I didn't have to say anything. Mm. And so both of those people said, okay, we're going to start next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. So that's another group. And that's a brand new believer. That's David. He's going to start reading 20 books. He accepts I mean, 20 chapters a week, 20 to 30 chapters. He's a brand. I told him, I said, David, if you can get this in your DNA from the very beginning, and you think, if you think this is natural, you'll, you'll, this is really healthy for you. You know, I was discipled by the navigators. Um, Dave, David Reeve down there to the, on the screen too. He's we both have navigator backgrounds. And I remember they taught us how to have a devotional diary and read about seven to 15 verses and write a summary and, a, and an application and to pray. And, and I thought all Christians did that. It was about two or three years later, I realized very few Christians had a daily quiet time. 
And we thought that was just natural in scripture memory. Mm-hmm. And so I think these, if we can just get brand new believers right, right into a, a transformation group and reading big doses of the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the stories I think I told you, Hermie, um, this guy named Manny, who's 23 from Romania, I told that I asked that one of the leaders and said, Hey, is it okay if I work with this guy? He's in your church. And they said, sure. I said, Oh, I've asked him to read 20 to 30 chapters this week. And he looked at me and said, he won't even read a chapter a month. <laughs> <laughs> so the very next week when I got together with Manny and we usually try to have a meal together in these groups too, you know, I have a little meal together. I said, how did it go? And he said, well, I read four chapters. I said, well, that's more than one. I mean, (laughs) the following week, and I got two other young guys into the group. I kind of broke the rule a little bit, so we were four. But I got Benaya, um, David, you know him, from uh, Oklahoma, and a guy named Thomas from Germany, just so he would have, like, some role models. And then the, by the following week, he had already read the whole book of John. He did it. He was so proud. That's I read awesome. the whole book in That's... one week. And today I told him, okay, let's read John uh, Luke, Luke now. And he said, he quickly wrote me back. That's 24 chapters. Yeah, that's not too many. That, I can do that. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so I don't want him to be around other believers, you know. <laughs> so wow. some good things are happening. Yeah. Another thing you also found that, you know, they feel like, okay, I just need to gather, you know, one or two more people to start one of these. So, uh, you know, that's, that's also doable. I think the, the less questions, so it doesn't take as much time. I think people can do this probably, it takes about an hour to do or, or even less. Uh, obviously, the preparation time, the reading time takes, take, takes longer, but you can do this uh, fairly, fairly quickly. So I can see this uh, be a tool to mobilize people in the marketplace, uh, you, you know, where they kind of start building some teams. Um, and David, I know we're kind of running out of time, but, um, you know, you've been using, Hinman, you've been using uh, the, the Genesis team, kind of like that's also a little bit of a discovery, discovery group. So that could be another way how you can, introduce them training as kind of like a next step um, by, by launching some teams uh, you know, as a result. But even I think that's, that's kind of training. Um, sometimes people even need to start to live the disciple life before it's been Christian for a while. And then we can introduce something like that, uh, Genesis team, uh, manual, or start, launching teams like like you're planning on, on on a Sunday afternoon and provide some provide some ongoing training and some coaching and some, some all of that launch a given uh, community so we're, we're still experimenting um, and I just thought that you know what grant you're you're onto something and um, I'll, I'd like us to kind of share as we're learning. Let's not wait till it's, till it's four generations deep and, and at the movement level before we actually start sharing. But uh, as we're experimenting, as we're learning, I did this, uh, I'd like us to, you know, just uh, share that and get each other's feedback and help, help pray and support one another. And, and similar, um, you know, with, with, with the others on the call today, we let Grant uh, kind of like lead, lead the time. Um, but yeah, would it give opportunity to you guys also? Thank you. Guys, it's a unisex term. Jackie. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jackie. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? We're at that hour mark. I want to ask Tom real quick. Uh, How's he doing up there in the motherload country? You're right in the middle of it, right? Okay. We are right in the middle of the motherload country, yes. Uh, my, in- my wife is from Garden Valley. What's that? My wife is from Garden Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we're up in Auburn. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, we're really enjoying it up here. 
Um, we're having a great opportunity to meet neighbors, a very friendly um, social neighborhood. And so, um, and so we're having some, some great opportunities that, uh, to get to know and uh, to bless and be blessed by, uh, by people up here. Yeah. Your four column study, your four column DG stuff is so good for us. The people love it. Okay. Yeah, really good, really good, really good. They love the four columns and writing it out. I've got missionaries doing it with me, but they, they don't want to stop. I said, listen, guys, we're supposed to, I'm just training you. They said, oh, we like this. I said, we like it too much, though. Go, you guys got to launch out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, hey, I want to respect our time. And David Reeves, uh, would you mind uh, closing us in a word of prayer? Sure. Sorry, sorry I'm late today. I, I had another call. Father, thank you so much for uh, getting us together. We thank you for what you're doing in our neighborhoods and communities. And we ask God that your power, uh, we would be filled with your Holy Spirit as we seek you, seek your face, and that you would be working through us. And Lord, that uh, you would be doing great things in each of these communities represented here. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.